In this example, I'm going to be taking a look at the limit of a product that is not the product of the limits. All right, as you're going to recall, that's going to be one of your limit theorems. And if you're not real careful, you're going to get caught up in this and do this incorrectly. All right, so if I'm trying to do this limit as x approaches 0 of x cotangent x, all right, I can see that this is a product. So because I have went through those um, limit theorems and I know that I can break that up and multiply the two limits that's my, might be what I do to begin with. So when you first look at this your first inkling might be to say okay I can do the limit of x approaches 0 of x times the limit as x approaches 0 of cotangent x. Okay, and you would do that because if here's the, the limit theorems that you have learned, all right, if I'm taking the limit of a product, then I can take the limit of each of them individually. Okay, and so you might think, okay, that's what I'm going to do on this. And on this right here, you're going to do a direct substitution. You're going to see that this one is zero. All right, then you might come over here and look at this and go, oh, well, I'm not exactly sure when I do a direct substitution. You might not know what that limit is, but then you're going to think, well, it doesn't matter what this limit is because zero times anything is going to be zero. And so then you're going to come to the conclusion that the answer is zero, okay, which is incorrect. Okay, now what I want to point out about this um, limit theorem here is all of these, you know, the sum and difference, you're taking the limit of the sum of difference or the product or a quotient here, all of these are only true if both the individual limits exist. All right, and so that's what you've got to be careful and watch for. Okay, so we know the limit as x approaches 0 of x. We know that one exists, all right? But what about this cotangent? All right, the easiest way to look at that would be to take a look at the graph, all right? Here's the graph of cotangent of x. And as x is approaching 0, as I come from the right, it is positive infinity. As I come from the left, it's negative infinity. So this limit by itself does not exist. So because that limit doesn't exist, I cannot apply this limit theorem. All right, so then you're going to have to have another way to do this. All right, since cotangent is trig there, we're going to do some little trig manipulations. All right, now before I go any farther, I am going to um, common in your textbook, you're going to see um, the limit as x approaches 0 of, say, sine x over x equals 1. Okay, I also, with my students, I also do the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x, and we learn and prove and verify that that is also 1. All right, so I am going to be using those two properties when I algebraic when algebraically manipulate this one to work it out. Okay, so um, what I would do is I would start with the limit as x approaches 0 of x cotangent x. Okay, so my first thing, I'm going to do a substitution and I'm going to switch cotangent for a, an equivalent identity that I know matches, which would be cosine over sine. So then I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0 of x times cosine x over sine x. All right, and then from here, I'm going to do some manipulation. This x is in the numerator, this sine x is in the denominator. That's something I know to be 1, so I'm going to do just a little bit of algebra manipulation here, rearrange this, because I can multiply things in any order that I want. I'm not going to change anything. So the limit as x approaches 0, and I'm going to rewrite this as x over sine x times cosine x. All right, and then from there, now I've got that product thing going on. I know this exists. I know this exists. So then I can apply the property, that, the theorem that I tried to apply up there. We can do the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x times the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x. All right, this one I know automatically goes to 1. All right, on this one, direct substitution, plug in a 0. Cosine 0 is 1. 
and then 1 times 1 is going to give me an overall limit of 1. Alright, so um, this was just kind of showing you um, that the limit of a product is not always the product of the limits. Alright, yes that property works, works really nicely as we saw down here, but the condition is both of those limits must exist. So that's something that you've got to be careful for and you got to watch out for. So definitely thanks for watching. Be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.